pay y'all song back. So, they really got swept. Like, they really got swept. I am not excited. I'm not excited. I'm not happy. I did my video yesterday because I was just, you know, watching stuff. And everything about Ben Simmons was, like, literally... It was giving me a headache and like i said i stand by what i said which is that it's not ben simmons fault that like him being in game four wouldn't have did anything it wouldn't have it, it just wouldn't have but i just want to nicely hopefully i don't yell get my feelings out since since the season is up i'm gonna give a season wrap up of how I feel about everybody and everybody's to blame. First of all, Ben Simmons, you partially to blame. You ain't as much to blame as everybody else, but you are a lot to blame. But I got on your ass the last video, so I don't really got to touch on you. What we got here? Number one, Steve Nash. <sighs> again, like I said last video, great coach, was a great player. But again, not all great players make great coaches. Obviously, I'm not in the locker room. I don't know really what the hell be going on. But I feel like Steve Nash was relying way too heavily on just the fact that he had Kyrie and KD. That's how I feel. I feel like he didn't really he didn't really work on defense like that. I think he was really more so heavily on offense and not just that, but like I said, in general. I mostly think that he didn't really put in a lot of work because he probably felt like he didn't have to because he had Katie and Kyrie. And I think that just shows throughout the whole season. Also, he's new. Like, this is his first year. He doesn't have enough experience. And I just feel like some people, I think, like, some people would feel like, you know, well, you have two superstars, so you really shouldn't have to do much. Like, in an ideal state, yes, but think about everything that happened this year. Like, it's not like he had KD and Kyrie the whole way through. He didn't even have James, Kyrie, and KD the whole way through. So you have to be able to manage, like, all of the other shit outside of people playing. And with it being his first time and you dealing with, like, these big, well, what we call, I guess what we call super teams, that's kind of a lot to take on your first time, especially when you've never done it before. And um, Skip brought up today during Undisputed, and I think this is an excellent point, too, why Steve Nash doesn't need to be the coach. And I'm saying all this to say he don't need to be the coach no more. I'm done. Get off my team. It's because he said nobody's scared of Steve Nash. Like, I don't think he invokes fear in anybody. He was like, you never see him arguing with the refs. You never see him doing any of that. He just seems like he's like a really nice guy. And in certain situations, in this situation in particular, which we're going to get to in the next two people, he needs to have a voice to be like, at my bad, y'all. X, Y, Z in the third, okay? My bad. I always do that to my camera. But, and he doesn't really have to me, it doesn't seem like he has that voice and he has to like gain that voice. What else we got? So let's move on from Steve Nash. Next person we got to talk about and kind of blame is KD. Now, I will say this. KD, as far as like him playing and stuff, I feel like he could have done better. He definitely could have done better throughout like the whole season and the playoffs. But I feel like unlike his counterpart or his counterpart, he actually like showed up for work and he actually like tried, you know? So I feel like if anybody like really, really tried out of everybody, it was Katie. He really, really tried. Um, but I feel like he needs to step up more, number one, as like a leader. Like he really needs to step up more. And I understand that like people are your friends and I understand like that that's the era that we're in is oh, I'm going to call my friend and let's do this. Like LeBron, you know, when it, uh, Russell and call Carmelo and stuff. But my thing is, how is that working out for y'all? You know, you pretty much wanted James and, and uh, James Harden and stuff like that. So you, him and Kyrie, and Kyrie could be there together and do what y'all want to do the same way that LeBron was over there. I was like, oh, I want Russell and I want Carmelo. And how did that work out for y'all working with your friends? You know, 
it's like I was just saying to somebody like I would never move in with my best friend me and my best friend would never move in with each other why because we like being friends and that's just kind of how I feel the situation is you and I mean you I mean KD I mean I feel like KD is just letting like certain things like just slide by because somebody is your friend like Kyrie was really doing a lot this season and you really just held him down because he was your friend but where is that getting you like at some point in time we got to separate the friendship because bro I thought this was gonna work and it's not gonna work so that's how I feel about that um and also in the respects of being friends like you gotta hold your friend accountable i don't know what katie was saying to Kyrie behind the scenes maybe he was holding him accountable but you gotta hold your friend accountable for the bullshit that he be saying and the bullshit that he do at times and i just feel like in general like not just with him but with the whole nets team where the was the sense of urgency like i don't feel like there was a sense of urgency this entire series y'all always just like where's the oomph at like y'all really could have did something like y'all really could have went and won this year if y'all really just would have like it just seems like nobody cares like other than katie it just feels like nobody cares and it's very much so annoying as hell and in general katie i really think katie you need to get your shit together because so far some little Kyrie, which we're gonna get to next it don't seem and, and granted hold on let me say this nobody can do anything by themselves even lebron needed you know d wade and, and chris bosh nobody can do it by themselves but i feel like and everybody else feel like you left golden state and came to brooklyn for a purpose because you wanted to be able to say that Oh, I didn't need Steph and I didn't need Draymond. I was able to go over to a whole nother conference and make shit shake myself. And you haven't been able to do that. And the fact that you've had the team that you've had and y'all still haven't been able to, like, get the job done. Like, y'all couldn't even get past the first round. Like, that's embarrassing. That's embarrassing. Like, bruh, bruh. Lord goodness. And then, let's get to Baby Daddy Kyrie. Baby Daddy, Baby Daddy, Baby Daddy. I actually have a video on my YouTube if you go back like a year and a half ago saying leave Kyrie alone. I go up. Before I start this, let me say, if anybody goes up for Kyrie, bitch, it's me. I call him baby daddy Kyrie for a reason, okay? That's baby fucking, that's baby daddy. However, comma, shout out to Kid Fury. <sighs> I seen a press conference that he did, okay? I seen a press conference that he did where, you know, he pretty much said, well, what were some of the things that he said that I wanted to talk about? Um, okay, first of all, he said, well, you know, I know, you know, I, I definitely thought about the fact, you know, that with everything that was going on with me, you know, that that could have possibly been a distraction. I definitely thought about that. What do you mean could have been a distraction? It was a distraction. And I know people killed Stephen A for his, uh, for his take on the whole situation. But I understood what he was saying. He wasn't saying that Kyrie don't have the right to make whatever decision that he wants to make. What he is saying is that you got your homeboy here, KD, and you got James here. And you're literally letting your team down. Like, you, you're not the only person who has to go through this. That's pretty much, I think, what Stephen A was saying. And I would have to agree. Like, you really pretty much said fuck your entire team which i mean that's your business but i'm just saying that it says a lot that you pretty much said fuck your entire team you don't care you don't care that you got james here you don't care that you got katie here that just fuck it like i'm, I'm just not gonna do it and i'm just gonna pretty much bullshit like you on to real shit if he would have played from start to finish i feel like they would have made it further but because of the fact that you're on and you're off and you're on and you're off and you're on and you're off, that makes it probably a little bit harder. Because from what I understand from listening to basketball players, it's hard to like, you can turn it on and off, but it's hard when you're not in like a consistent rhythm, consistent rhythm like everything else. And so, like, I just think, what do you mean it, it may have been a distraction? It absolutely was a distraction. And, this, and the simple fact that it seems like, you're like, oh, well, I mean, I, I did kind of sort of think that. No, that's what it was. Again, you can make whatever decision that you want to make, but it did. But it was extremely selfish, point blank, period. Because you're acting like you're the only person who had to get vaccinated. The only person. Do you know how many people every day working? And also, let me, let me get into that. There is a privilege. 
And that's the only thing that bothered me about Kyrie and that whole vaccination thing is that there's a privilege to that that you're not even acknowledging that you have. You have the privilege to say, I don't want to get vaccinated. Because regardless of the situation, you and your family will be good. There's a privilege to that. And I wish that more than anything, he would have spoke to at least that point. You, you actually have the option. And the rest of your people had the option and still said, you want to know it for the betterment of the team. That was super annoying to me. What else did we have? Then you pretty much was like, oh, yeah, me and KD, we're going to do a better job of making sure that we got this and making sure that we got this person that we going to sit with the owners. What? You are not Rob Palenka? Like, I know that people say that, like, LeBron is, like, you know, like, a quote-unquote GM over there in the Lakers, but that's nothing that we, that's nothing that nobody ever, like, flat-out acknowledges for real like that. That is some behind-the-door closed-scene shit. And not only that, but he's LeBron James at the end of the day. He has weight, and I love Kyrie. Lord knows I do. But see, the difference between LeBron and Kyrie is LeBron produces a lot of the time. You do not. This is his first playoff. And I think, what, 19 years that LeBron didn't make it or something like that? The man meant to, I don't know how many finals, whether he lost or not, how many finals did he go to? So they probably definitely would listen to him a little bit more. But I bet you after this whole uh, L.A. situation, they probably are going to take a little bit of a pullback or kind of push back on him a little bit. But for you to think that you, number one, like, again, if y'all would have like actually made it a little further and all of this other bullshit when it happened i would say that you would have first of all i would say that why are you even saying that out loud on a press conference like that's not that's not you should be saying out loud but number two i would feel like you got a better leg to stand on but at this point Kyrie, these people are probably like really thinking about getting rid of you and the only reason they probably won't get rid of you is because of katie because katie wouldn't want that but you don't even have the right not this season, maybe the season before or after the James trade or after the game, maybe after all of that. But you do not have the right right now to sit up there and say, oh, well, we're going to get together and we're going to make sure that we make these changes. And blah, blah, blah. How about you work on making sure that you're going to stay with your team, making sure that you're consistent and hitting the gym? How about that? How about you worry about all of the clerical work and the decisions that need to be made at the top by the top people in KD? Because you, at this point, you don't deserve a say in shit as far as I'm concerned. You literally, this entire season, bruh, if it has not been one thing, it's been another. Like, even outside of the vaccination stuff, it's just been nonstop with you, and it's very much so annoying. And all it's proving, and again, like I said, Kyrie, that's not even Diddy. But all it's proven is everybody right. You literally didn't want to be with LeBron anymore because you wanted to prove a point, similar to how KD wants to prove a point that I can do this. I don't, I, you know, I, I I can just, me and one other person, I don't really need all of that. I got it, I got it. I don't need him pretty much. Like Kyrie don't need LeBron and, you know, KD's like, well, I don't need Steph and I don't need all of these other people. I could do it, right? But the point of the matter is, you wasn't with LeBron anymore. You went to Boston. How did that work out? Where did Boston get versus where is Boston now? If it walks like a duck, if it quacks like a duck, bitch, athlete. That's all I'm saying. So unless y'all could turn this around sometime next season, at this point, I believe what everybody say. You need somebody like that's a notch above you, Kyrie, for you to do what you got to do. You are a secondary player. And you need that extra help. And there ain't nothing wrong with that. You just, you could be Scottie Pippen. Scottie Pippen got how many rings? I'm just saying. But at this point, between your shenanigans, your inconsistency, I'm just a little lost. And I don't understand how you think you can come into anybody's situation at this point and say, oh, well, we're going to be making trades. No, you need to be more concerned about being consistent and staying in the fucking gym. That's what you need to be fucking concerned about. Um, but in general, I just feel like this team, like so much potential, so much potential. And then just bullshit after bullshit after bullshit after bullshit after bullshit. So many things that did not need to happen. Like, there's no reason. Like, I really want people to really remember this in their head. Similar to how they're going to remember the Lakers. That at one point in time, LeBron James, Carmelo Anthony, 
Russell, uh, Russell Westbrook, like all of these people was on one team and didn't even make it to the playoffs. Same way, at one point in time, there was James Harden, Kyrie Irving, and KD all on the same team. And we can even throw Blake Griffin. And they got kicked out in the first round. Y'all disgust me. Y'all make me mad. But I'm over it. I'm over it. I don't even got nothing nice to say. Get rid of Steve Nash. KD step the fuck up. And Kyrie either step the fuck up or step the fuck off. And I love you, baby daddy. I do. I lost y'all by.